Are you ready to talk about airspace? Because this one is a big one. The national airspace system divides the atmosphere into unique sectors defined by specific lateral and vertical boundaries. Factors such as type and density of traffic in each area, national safety, and public interest determines the classification in each sector. Airspaces can be split into four different types – controlled, uncontrolled, special use, and others. Some are regulated, others are non-regulatory. Let's talk about each of those and the rules that govern them. In the controlled airspace type, we have class Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo. Sorry, no Foxtrot, we don't like the F word in the United States. Alpha Airspace starts at flight level 180 and goes up to flight level 600 and covers the entire 48 contiguous states and Alaska up to 12 nautical miles offshore. An IFR clearance is required to be in that airspace, so if you're a private pilot, you don't need to worry about that one. Most single engine aircraft can't fly that high, anyways. Bravo airspace can be found around very busy airports like JFK or LAX and are usually shaped like an upside down wedding cake, starting at the surface around the airfield and progressively starting higher and higher as you get further away from its center. They are depicted on sectional chart with a thick blue line and numbers indicating the altitude the airspace starts at and where it ends, SFC indicating surface. Any private pilot can fly into a class Bravo, but you will need an ATC clearance to enter the airspace, meaning they have to clearly tell you you're clear into the Bravo. Student pilots can fly into Bravo airspace if they have been properly endorsed by their instructor and the Bravo isn't one of the 12 listed in the AIM. The minimum weather requirements for a VFR flight into Bravo airspace, not including special VFR, is you have to be able to remain clear of the clouds and visibility needs to be 3 statute mile or greater. Your aircraft must also be equipped with a two-way radio, a mode C transponder and ADS-B out. Charlie airspace will be found around slightly less busy airports than a class Bravo, but still busy enough to require radar approach assistance. Airports like Santa Barbara, California, Pensacola, Florida or San Antonio, Texas are good examples. They are also shaped like an upside-down wedding cake, usually with just the inner shell and one outer shell. They are depicted on sectional chart with a thick magenta line. You will need to establish two-way communication prior to entering a class Charlie, meaning ATC needs to reply to your radio call with your call sign and not tell you to stay clear of the airspace. The minimum weather requirements for a VFR flight are 500 feet below the clouds, 1,000 feet above, 2,000 feet horizontal, and at least 3 statute mile visibility. And your aircraft must be equipped with a two-way radio, a transponder with automatic altitude reporting capability, and ADS-B out. Delta airspace can be found around smaller airports that still require a control tower, at least part-time. Some deltas revert to class Echo or Golf when the tower isn't in operation. Check the chart supplement for that information. Class Delta airspace has a simpler, usually cylindrical shape. They are depicted on sectional charts with a dotted blue line. The minimal weather requirements for a VFR flight are the same as Class Charlie, but the aircraft only needs to be equipped with a two-way radio, unless the Delta you are flying to happens to be within 30 nautical miles of a Bravo airspace. Then the Bravo airspace equipment requirements apply. Echo airspace is any remaining controlled airspace that is an Alpha, Bravo, Charlie or Delta. It is depicted on sectional charts based on the altitude at which it starts. A dotted magenta line indicates echo starts at the surface. A magenta vignette gradient indicates it starts at 700 feet AGL on the side where the gradient is the lightest. And a blue vignette gradient indicates it starts at 1200 feet AGL. If none of the above is shown, then class echo starts at 14,500 feet MSL. But here's the catch. There are almost nowhere in the US where it actually starts that high, with the exception of a few offshore area that are showing the blue vignette, but you'll notice how it's oriented. The area inside this demarcation is where it starts at 14,500. Everything else outside it, meaning most of the continental US, is technically included in the blue vignette, and therefore Echo starts at 1200 feet AGL. And technically the airspace above flight level 600 is also class Echo. The minimum weather requirements for a VFR flight are 500 feet below the clouds, 1000 feet above, 2000 feet horizontal and at least 3 statute mile visibility if you are flying under 10,000 feet MSL. If you are flying above 10,000 feet MSL, it will be 1000 below the clouds, 1000 feet above, 1 statute mile horizontal and at least 5 statute mile visibility. If you are flying in echo airspace above 10,000 feet MSL and 1200 feet AGL, your aircraft will also be required to be equipped with a transponder with automatic altitude reporting capability and a DSB out. 
Uncontrolled airspace is basically just referred to as class Golf. Golf airspace is any part of the airspace that hasn't been designated as Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, or Echo. It starts at the surface wherever another airspace isn't present and extends up to wherever class Echo starts. It is therefore not depicted on sectional charts. Anyone can fly in class Golf and no specific aircraft equipment is required. The minimum weather requirements for a VFR flight are a little more complex. For aircrafts other than helicopters, during the day below 1200 feet AGL, you have to be able to remain clear of the clouds and the visibility must be at least one statute mile. During the day between 1200 feet AGL and 10,000 feet MSL, the minimums are 500 feet below the clouds, 1000 feet above, 2000 feet horizontal, and at least one statute mile visibility. And at any of those altitudes at night, the minimums are 500 feet below the clouds, 1000 feet above, 2000 feet horizontal, and three statute mile visibility. And finally, if you are above 1200 feet AGL and 10,000 feet MSL, day or night, the minimums are 1,000 feet below the clouds, 1,000 feet above, one statute mile horizontal, and at least five statute mile visibility. I will probably make a separate video to go over VFR minimums and how I managed to remember them all. Special use airspace includes the following seven. Prohibited areas are regulatory airspace where flights are, like the name suggests, prohibited for national security reasons. For example, the White House. They are depicted on sectional charts by a blue hash shaped with the letter P followed by a series of numbers inside. Do not enter. Restricted areas are also regulatory airspace that denotes the existence of unusual, often invisible hazard to aircrafts. Do not enter those areas without prior approval from the controlling agency if the area is active. If it isn't, you technically do not require permission to enter, but it doesn't hurt to get it anyway. They are depicted on sectional charts the same way as prohibited areas, except the letter R followed by a series of numbers will be written inside the area. Warning areas are non-regulatory airspace of defined dimensions extending from 3 nautical miles outward from the coast of the US. Those areas contain activities that may be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. You do not require permission to enter them, but it's a fly-at-your-own-risk kind of situation. They are depicted on sectional charts the same way as prohibited and restricted areas, except the letter W followed by a series of numbers will be written inside the area. MOAs, or military operation areas, are non-regulatory airspace where activities such as air combat tactics, air intercept, aerobatics, formation training, and low-altitude tactics can be conducted. If you are flying VFR and the area is active, you should contact the controlling agency prior to entering the MOA and obtain traffic advisory. You do not need permission to enter if the area is inactive, but please note that the status of an MOA can change frequently, so checking in with the controlling agency is never a bad idea. Permanent MOAs are depicted on sectional charts by a magenta hashed shape with the name of the MOA written inside. Alert areas are non-regulatory airspace that denotes area that may contain high volume of pilot training or an unusual type of aerial activities. You do not require permission to enter, but should exercise extreme caution when flying through one. They are depicted on sectional charts the same way as an MOA, except the letter A followed by a series of number will be written inside the area. Control firing areas are non-regulatory airspace that contain activities that could be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. They are uncharted because said activities will be suspended immediately if non-participating aircraft were to enter the area. National security areas can be found around areas that require increased security and safety of ground facilities. They are depicted on sectional chart by thick dash magenta lines. Pilots are asked to voluntarily avoid them, and in some cases, flight in those areas might be temporarily prohibited altogether. Always check the notums to make sure. Other airspace includes anything that hasn't been covered this far. You can read about them all in more details in Chapter 3, Section 5 of the AIM, but here's a short overview. Airport advisory slash information service areas are located around non-towered airports that have a flight service station and is only available in Alaska. Someone who lives there, please explain to me how this works. Military training routes are used to conduct low-altitude, high-speed training, usually below 10,000 feet and at speed exceeding 250 knots. They are depicted on sectional charts with a thin gray line with either IR or VR written on them, followed by four digits if flown below 1,500 feet AGL or three digits if flown above. Use caution whenever crossing one of those lines as military aircrafts may be flying low and fast. 
TFRs or temporary flight restrictions are used to protect persons or property in the air or on the surface from an existing or imminent hazard, provide a safe environment for the operation of disaster relief aircraft or for space agency operations, to prevent an unsafe congestion of sightseeing aircraft above an incident or event which may generate a high degree of public interest, and to protect the president, vice president, or other public figures. They can pop up anywhere and at any time, so always check the NOTAMs to see if there is one near you. They will also show up on electronic charts like ForeFlight and SkyVector. Parachute jumping areas is pretty self-explanatory. They are published in the chart supplement and they can be depicted on sectional charts with that hot air balloon symbol if the area is used frequently. ATC will vector you around the area if in use, but you should always be aware if you're flying through one, and communicate on CTAF if the area isn't covered by ATC. Be smart and uh, don't kill skydivers. Ah! Published VFR routes, also referred to as VFR flyaways, VFR corridors, or VFR transition routes, can be very useful if you need to fly near, around, or through a very busy airspace like a Class Bravo. You can find all details on how to navigate one on the terminal area charts. TERSAs, or Terminal Radar Service Areas, are relics, a thing of the past, but you may still encounter them around some Delta airports. They are essentially an extension of that airspace with radar service much like a Class Charlie. They are depicted on sectional charts with a solid black line. VFR pilots are encouraged to use the radar approach, but it is not mandatory. Special Air Traffic Rules and Special Flight Rules Area are airspace within which the flight of aircraft is subject to the rules set forth in CFR Part 93. Please note that if you have the most common version of the FAR AIM, Part 93 is not included in it, but you can find it online or the rules for each of those specific areas can be found on the terminal area charts. Weather Recognizance Area are used to support weather recognizance slash search flights, to gather meteorological data on hurricanes and tropical cyclones. The specific dimensions and location are published in NOTAMS. No ATC coverage will be provided in those areas, and no non-participating aircraft is allowed in. And finally, special conservation areas are used to protect national parks, wildlife refuges, and wilderness areas. They are depicted on sectional charts by a blue line with blue dots on the inside. Do not fly lower than 2000 feet AGL above those. Well, that was a lot, but I hope this video helped clarify a few things. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.